things that we deal with every day. Today, unfortunately, you know, we have the news that, that Steven Twitch Boss has lost his life at 40 years old. And they're saying tentatively that um, as of right now, they, they say it's suicide. And I'm hearing a lot of commentary about, you know, they just don't understand. You know, you never know what's going on with somebody. Well, I mean, I'm not I, 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 I'm going to say that I don't I don't know exactly what's gone on here. And I don't you know, we don't fully know the story that's gone on. And it's definitely a massive issue with mental illness. But I'm going to speak from the point of view as a black man here. And as a black man, we do kind of know. As black men, we do know what we're dealing with on a daily basis as a group, as a collective. And one of the issues that we are faced with as black men in our, in our community is it's, it's very solitary. Um, I've noticed over the past several years, you know, I'm 48 years old, and I've noticed over the past several years, especially that as black men, we are, we have been, you know, whether systematically, whether it's just, you know, the sign of the times, but it's, 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 it's somewhat of a, a deliberate nature to the separation to where we we find ourselves by ourselves a lot of times. Um, and I say this specifically because there was a time when, you know, when as black men, we had each other to lean on. We would spend a lot of time together. We would spend every day, all day together. We would, we would congregate, we would talk, we would build, we would, you know, we would spend a lot of time together. Um, in groups and collectives and, you know, systematically for various reasons, whether it's, you know, searching for opportunities, whether it's for, you know, losing, you know, whether it's the, you know, penitentiary system, whether it's, you know, being killed, whether it's dying early due to health issues that are pervasive in, 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 in black men, you know, there's been a variety of reasons for the separation to the point where fast forward, you know, even to the day, you know, those who I call close friends, you know, we are not allowed, seem like, you know, life does not allow us to be in the same place at the same time. And this is something that I've really noticed over the past few years, especially as I got, you know, I, I set up a place where I got centralized so that, you know, I could um, have a place for for people to come and, and, and you know, and share and be and grow with in community. And I, and I learned something during this process that, it is nearly impossible, you know, as black men to get on the same page at the same time. And the only time when we're allowed to be together is at the end of the day, after hours, if we're if it's, it's a social gathering or something, you know, for, you know, for entertainment or something, but not anything productive or beneficial, you know, not during the day, not during business hours, not during, you know, you know, time of day when when actual production is being done. You know, there's a series of life issues. And I looked up and I thought it was just me initially, but it's not just me. As as my path started to change and vary to the place where I took control of my time, I started to realize that my peers could not and that they do not control their time. They do not have control of it. They don't even have, have access to their time. And um, this is something that's pervasive for for a lot of men. But especially for for black men, this is this is something that's that's, you know, wreaked major havoc on us mentally, emotionally. And so now we're starting to see a lot of these things break down. Now, I'm not saying that this is what's happened with um with with Twitch and his situation, but I am indicating that as black men, there is, you know, a reason for a lot of the mental distress that we're faced with on top of being black men. I was talking to my father yesterday and he, he'll be 86, he'll be 86 years old in a few months. And he indicated to me something that was very interesting to me. He said that he remembers the exact moment in his life when blacks in America started to consider themselves black or African or African American. Before then, before then, you know, they considered, you know, we were considered, you know, Negro or colored. And this was the this was the terminology that was used. And so this was this was the time when when there was a shift. And this was in he said this was like in the early 60s. 
This was like in 61 or 62 when the, the shift occurred. And he said there was a major, you know, a national, you know, awareness. And there was a lot of um, terrorism on blacks that was going on, you know, nationally, you know, across the country that caused, you know, black folks to start to, you know, um, redefine themselves and really look at themselves differently. Now, so fast forward, you know, this is, you know, this is in the early 60s. So, you know, fast forward, you know, 60 years. And, and here we are today to where black men are not even able to congregate, to, to spend time together. There's a lot of brothers that, that I've been trying to desperately for the past few years. And we've had some engagements on the phone or what have, but it has been nearly impossible, impossible for me to be able to engage in real time with my peers because they are always held to the plantation, which my father coined that, you know, years ago to me, you know, the plantation, you know, they're, they're, they're relegated to the plantation and they dare not, they dare not, um, try to leave the plantation and, and be caught, you know, congregating with one another out in the, out in the real world during business hours. And this is the situation that I've, that I've been dealing with. I mean, seriously, you know, guys that I, you know, went to high school with and, you know, you know, went to school with and grew up with, it's it's come to the point where we're not even allowed to spend time together, you know, societally, you know, and so this is this is not and it's not just me. So that's the whole thing. I thought, you know, it was just me for a while. It's not just me. You know, this is a this is a this is a of epidemic proportions, you know, for black men, you know, and as we struggle with mental illness, you know, mental illness has always been pervasive, but we once had each other. We once had each other to, to set in community with, to, to set in, you know, iron sharpens iron. We don't have that anymore. We don't have that anymore. So as black men, we're called to be, you know, constantly performing. We're called, we're called to be happy all the time. We're called to be, you know, entertaining and making everybody feel good. And if we're not doing that, if we're talking contradictory or if we're, if we're, if we're, you know, rocking the boat, or if we're doing something against the grain, we're, we're shunned, we're ostracized, we're demonized, you know, and, and we're, we're, we're held down even further. And then it's become a point to where it's become riskier for other black men to get around you because now you're a threat. Now you're a rebel rouser. You know, I don't want to ca get caught talking to you. You know, that's a serious issue. And so when you, when you mount all of the issues that we face as black men that have been pervasive, you know, throughout hundreds of years in our country. And I say our country because this is our country. We've built this country. We built this country. This is our country. This is our America. But we've been oppressed in our America for so long from the beginning that it's, it's, it's created a situation to where we are really we are really in a very detrimental time right now. So as I listen to, you know, I listen to Dr. Claude Anderson, you know, voraciously, you know, I listen to, you know, you know, Robert F. Smith, I listen to Don Peoples, I listen to, you know, you know, black men who have, you know, I listen to my father who have been in the, you know, been black men a lot longer than me, you know, and I listen to them very carefully. And then I equate that with what I've learned, you know, even when they were born, the, the, the culture and the things that were going on then, we are in a very dangerous place if we do not start to have the conversations and say, well, you know, there's a lot stacked against black men. And, you know, it's, it's, it's to the point to where we can't, you know, convolute it with every other situation. And that's another issue. We'll have that on later, you know, later podcasts. But there's a greater issue where the where the black agenda has been so co-opted in order to gain strength when here's the issue. Every time that it's been co-opted to gain strength, you know, there's usually strength in numbers. We're always the ones who are, we, we, we die, we bleed, we shed blood, and, and we're always the ones that's left out of the agenda. So it starts out as our agenda is co-opted, and then it becomes another agenda that benefits from it, and then we're left standing there still, you know, worse off than we were before we began. So here's the reality. You know, we have to speak towards the fact that as black men, you know, it's, it's more than just it's more than just a, a, a war against black men. It's a culture that's been developed, that's been cultivated in order to make sure that we're unable to rise above our station. And so and like I say, I don't know if this is part of what happened with 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 
Stephen Twitch boss today. I don't know. This is a tragedy by any means. He's a young man. He's a he's a, you know he's a millennial. He's a young black man that 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 seemed to have everything going. Seemed to have everything going. Here's the thing, and I'm gonna say something else. Those that make people the happiest, those that in, that entertain people, those that spend a lot of time singing, dancing, you know, performing for others in order to enrich and make you know, other people's lives enjoyable, these are most often the individuals who are the loneliest, who are, who, who have the, the, you know, the least amount of support, you know, internal, you know, and mental and emotional support in their lives. And especially as black men, you know, this, this is, you know, one thing I've learned, and I've learned this over the past few years, there's no amount of money that a black man can have that's going to lift him out of the station that the world and the culture has placed him in. There's no amount of money because the reality of it is, and this is be on, on a later podcast as well, we'll talk about the racial wealth gap globally, not just nationally, but globally. And here's the reality, just a quick, just a quick stat, you know, that we are actually the one, here's, here's an interesting stat, and it kind of can equate this, you know, even down, you know, throughout the diaspora. But the wealthiest black man in the world is still 96 percent. 96. There's a 90 percent, 96 percent deficit between the wealthiest black man in the world and the wealthiest man that's not black in the world. That's a huge deficit. And so when we talk about finance, when we talk about economics, you know, there's a, there's a level, and I heard of extremely wealthy, and I'm not going to mention his name, but I heard an extremely wealthy, I mean, extremely wealthy and, and productive and active and, you know, tapped in black men say, you know, in the past year or so, you know, that there's a lot of things that happen, and this is nationally, that there's no amount of money that a black man can have in these rooms to move policy, meaning he said, he said, there's, there's, there's a lot of rooms where your money is no good when you're a black man at the highest level, at the highest levels. This thing is pretty serious. This is extremely serious. And if you're a black man, it's even more serious. So, you know, me, myself as a black man that have, I mean, the reality of it is, is, you know, I spend a lot of time talking about my father and I'm going to keep talking about my father. I'm going to honor my father. I mean, he's a, he's awesome. He's an awesome man. He's written an awesome autobiography that I, you know, that I really encourage all to really digest. But even more than that, my own personal story, you know, and those around me, those of my peers, you know. And so when we see, you know, situations like today with with Twitch um, taking his life is what they're saying, you know, and I'm just going to go with what the news is reporting right now. Um, these situations don't happen in a vacuum. This is not just a one off. There's not just a you know, he seemed to have everything. I don't see what's happening. As a black man, hey, I'm gonna be honest with you. There's no amount of money in, there's no amount of money that we have access to. I put it like that. There's no amount of money that we have access to that is enough to protect us mentally because the more the, the higher up you are as a black man, the more you see how desperate the situation is. You know, listen to a great interview last night. I'll even talk about that later in podcast, but you know, by Robert F. Smith. It was the most important interview, I'm going to say, of 2022 for, for, for Black America. And if you didn't listen to it, I'm going to tell you, I'm gonna, you know, check it out, you know, on um, Earn Your Leisure, um, guys. They're doing awesome things, you know, on, um, on their show and everything. I might even put the link in, in I'll even put the link, you know, um, with my um, podcast today. But I'm going to tell you, you got to listen to them. You got to, I mean, here's the thing, you know, the game is afoot and I'm going to tell you, you know, well, it is time for us to start having the conversations. Well, you know, it is time. You're going to hear my voice a lot on these topics. Well, you know, there's a lot of work to be done, you know, and praise be to God. You know, this is the time to do it. You know, this is the time, you know, as, as men, as black men, that we have to. It is mandatory that we stop, you know, s you know staying separated and that we make sure that we put this thing together by the grace of God. So, well, this is the show for today, guys and um, gals. You know, I, I hope it makes some sense. You know, leave some comments. You know, let's get engaged here. Uh, you know, communication and 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 conversation is what we need. 
So, well, have a great day. God bless.